When I first started working with Napier's Bones, I was very excited to find that the set came with instructions inside for how to do the operations, and they work really well. Um, but as I started reading uh, Napier's original works, his rhabdology, I found that Napier actually did it slightly differently. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a different method of carrying out a mathematical operation. It works perfectly fine. But I thought some of you might be interested in seeing the way that Napier himself actually did this. If you're interested in reading about the rods, um, there is an English translation of the rhabdology in the book, The Life and Works of John Napier by Rice, Gonzalez Velasco, and Corrigan. So I'm gonna jump in and work out four cube root problems using the method exactly as Napier used it. I'll be using the four problems that I've already worked out in earlier videos so that you can use them to compare and contrast. So the first example will be the cube root of 830,000 584. The first thing that we do is to use the cube root rod. Well, actually, let me write this up in the way he would have written it. He would not have used the notation that I have at the top of the page. So he would write the number that he wanted to find the cube root of, which is 830,584, and he would have split it into triplets starting at the back, so breaking up the numbers into groups of three, and you should include the dot at the back. These are not decimal points, these are ways of separating numbers. So we also then draw a line beneath the number, and another line beneath that, and our answer is going to appear in the space between those two lines. So the first step is to begin with the triplet farthest to the left. To look at our cube root rod, we're gonna be looking at the first two columns here and look for the number closest to 830 without going over. Well, that's here in row nine, that is 729. So this came from row nine, which I'm going to put here as the first part of my answer. It goes directly beneath the first dot. And then the result there is 729. And what we need to do to continue is to subtract the 729 from the 830. And the way Napier did that was to write the result on top. Now, I don't know about you, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that. I'm used to doing my subtraction, you know, with these two numbers close together and working down. But I'm, I'm writing this up just exactly as Napier had done. Our next step is to look at the 9, or the first result in our answer, which um, Napier calls the first quotumus, and we're going to multiply that by 3. And so 9 times 3 is 27. We're going to create a 27 on the right-hand side of our cube root plate. Then we're going to look at the quotumus again, and we're going to square it. 9 squared is 81. If you multiply that by 3, you get 243. How about if I put it in the right order there? 243. Those go on the left. So this is 9 times 3, and this is 9 squared times 3. Now, it's a little hard to see what we're looking for, but we're going to try to find the number on the left that is closest to 101,584 without going over. And so in order to do that, and just make a little comment here, it might be helpful to do some masking off at this point so that you're focused only on the numbers that are necessary to you. At the back, we basically have a second index, the numbers one through nine. We have the squares of those numbers, and we have this second number that we're concerned about here. But in finding the number closest to 101,584 without going over, we're going to be using just these columns. So that can be found in row four, 
where we have in the ones place a four, in the tens place a six, hundreds place is going to be a two, thousands place is going to be a seven, and the ten thousands place is going to be a nine. If I took this one further, I would have one, 120,000, 120,000, which is larger than my 101,584. Now, we found this number in the fourth row. And we're going to need to square that, that four and augment it with its square. So we get a 164. And that is actually sitting right here, the number four, which indicates the row, and its square directly in front of it. The next step is to multiply the 6 by this number at the back, the 27. So we're going to multiply the 27 by 6, and we can just read it straight off. It's 162. 162. And I'm going to write that in such a way that the 1's place is under the 6, which is what I was using to multiply. Then I'm going to multiply by the 1. Well, 1 times 27 is 27, and we want to get the 1's place directly below what we were multiplying by, which is the 1. As we add straight down, we see that the result is 101,584, which is exactly what we were looking for. So the row that this came from is our second quotumus, and the cube root of 830,584 is 94. Now there's quite a lot going on there, so I am going to go ahead and move into those other examples. Of course, you can pause at any time. If you need to pause and uh, ponder that a bit, go for it. Our next example is somewhat smaller. It's 1,728, so I'll just reset my board. I have my strips just above my workspace so I can easily grab them. Okay, same thing. I'm going to rewrite the number that I'm trying to find the cube root of. I'm going to break it into triplets starting at the back. If you have only one number or two numbers at the front instead of three, that's fine. We're going to put a line under that number and another line below that one in order to give us a space to write our answer. The first step involves only the cube root rod. We're going to look at this, and it's going to be the first two columns again. These others don't relate to this part. The first two columns, what's the closest cube to one without going over? Well, that's here. One cubed is one. So the first part of my answer, the first quotumus, is a one. And the result... <laughs> so this one is so simple that I have to think about it a minute. But what we're getting from row one... So this is a one because it's row one. The one that goes down here is because the result is a one. When I subtract... 1 minus 1, I get a 0. You could write that in if you wanted to, but, but we're not actually going to, to go ahead and do that. What we're looking for now is the number that goes is closest to 728 without going over once we set up our board for the next step. So what we're going to do is take our first quotumus, multiply it by 3, then we're going to square the 1. Oh, well, this is nice, because 1 times 1 is still 1. You're going to multiply that by 3 and put that result to the left. I'll once again be looking over here to the left of where we have all the perfect squares. You can, again, um, mask that off if it's helpful. So I'm trying to find the closest thing to 728. Well, this is thousands. We've got 3,429 down here. 
So let's see, 728. This is 608. Row 3 is 927. So I'm going to go with row 2, which gave me 608. 608. I need to augment the 2 with its square, and that is sitting oops, right here. Um, 2 squared is 4, so I'm going to put that in the front. We're going to use that 4, multiply on the right hand side, we get a 12. I want to make sure that those 1's place one's places line up, the thing I'm multiplying by, and the 1's place of the result line up. As we add straight down, we get 728. So our second quotumus is 2, which is the row that this came from. And so the cube root of 1,728 is 12. My answer is here between the two lines. For the cube root of 32,768, again, we set this up so that we're splitting into triples. We create a space for our answer. And we start out with just the cube root rod, looking for the perfect cube close to 27, or excuse me, 32 without going over. And that is 27, which is in row 3. 32 minus 27 is 5. Once we set up the board, we will be looking for the number closest to 5,768 without going over. Oh, and I need to write my quotumus, the first part of my answer, and that's a 3. That comes from the row um, that we were working with. So the first thing we do is to take the 3 and multiply it by 3. We're always multiplying by 3. It's just a coincidence that this is a 3 as well. 3 times 3 is 9. That goes on the right. We square the 3, which is 9. We multiply the square by 3. 9 times 3 is 27. This goes to the left of the cube root plate. So I'm looking over here for what is closest to 5,768 without going over. Um, I see in the second row I've got 1 plus 4 is 5. We're in the 5,000s. Five it's 5,400 something. But in the third row I have 8,000. So that's too big. We're going to go with row 2, which gives us, let's see, in the 1's place we have an 8, 10's place we have a 0, 100's place we have a 4, 1,000's place we have 1 plus 4, which is 5. We augment the 2 by its square. 2 squared is 4. And then we multiply on the right-hand side by the 4. 4 times 9 is 36. We make sure that the 1's place is under what we were multiplying by. We add. And we come up with exactly what we were looking for, because these numbers are perfect cubes. I set it up that way. And we find that our answer is that the cube root of 32,768 is 32. If you forgot what row you were in, you can always find it here. That's what this number represents. So one more example. There are a lot of steps here, but hopefully at this point, you're kind of um, getting into the flow of things. It's very repetitive once you do this a few times. So again, writing it out, splitting it into triples. Don't forget the dot at the back because the last digit of your answer goes underneath the dot. We start with just the plate. Closest cube to 140 without going over is 125. The next one up is 216. 125 is in row 5, so that's the first part of our answer. And then we subtract 125 from 140, and the result is 15. 
So what we're looking for next is 15,608, actually the closest thing to it, as we set up the board. 3 times 5 is 15. That goes in the back. We square the 5 to get 25, and we multiply the 25 by 3. So this is now set up. We can start looking for the closest thing to 15,608 without going over. Um, so here in the first row, I've got a 7,000, 7,501. But here I've got a 15,000. Um, and here we've got 22,000. So definitely going to go with the second row here. So again, we're going to have a 2. From that second row, we are getting... 1, 5, 0, 0, 8. It's typically best to start from the ones place in case you have to do any carrying, but that worked out okay. Augment the number on the top by its square. Multiply that square by the number at the back. And so this is a 60, right? We add down the diagonals. This is a 60. I want to make sure that the ones place ends up beneath that 4. And so when I add, I get 15,608. That matches exactly what we were looking for. If we subtract this from up above, we get 0. It goes in evenly. And so the cube root of 140,608 is 52. So. If you're wondering about some of the mechanics, um, towards the end of one of my earlier videos, I did show some of the algebra that's behind this, and I'll put a link in the description. Um, I'm also going to do a far larger example, um, which is the one that uh, Napier actually does in his Rhabdology. It's a huge example. It's the only one he gives, but I think he tries to show every... Um, possible detail that could come up in his example. So that'll be coming in a future video.